the Lord gave me the following view in 1847, while the brethren were assembled on the Sabbath at Topsham, Maine. We felt an unusual spirit of prayer, and as we prayed, the Holy Ghost fell upon us. We were very happy. Soon I was lost to the earthly things and was wrapped in a vision of God's glory. I saw an angel fly swiftly to me. He quickly carried me from the earth to the holy city. In the city, I saw a temple which I entered. I passed through the door before I came to the first veil. This veil was raised and I passed into the holy place. Here I saw the altar of incense and the candlestick with seven lamps, and the table on which was the shewbread. After viewing the glory of the holy, Jesus raised the second veil, and I passed into the holy of holies. In the holiest I saw an ark on the top, and the sides of it was the purest gold. On each end of the ark was a lovely cherub with its wings spread out over it. Their faces were towards each other, and they looked downward. Between the angels was the golden censer. About the ark where the angels stood was an exceeding bright glory that appeared like the throne where God dwelt. Jesus stood by the ark, and as the saints' prayers came up to him, the incense in the censer would smoke, and he could offer up their prayers with the smoke of the incense to his Father. In the ark was the golden pot of manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of stone which folded together like a book. Jesus opened them, and I saw the Ten Commandments written on them with the finger of God. On one table were four, and on the other six. The four on the first table shone brighter than the other six. But the fourth, the Sabbath commandment, shone above them all. For the Sabbath was set apart to be kept in honor of God's holy name. The holy Sabbath looked glorious. A halo of glory was all around it. I saw that the Sabbath commandment was not nailed to the cross. If it was, the other nine commandments were, and we are at liberty to break them all, as well as to break the fourth. I saw that God had not changed the Sabbath, for He never changes. But the Pope had changed it from the seventh to the first day of the week, for he was to change times and the laws. And I saw that if God had changed the Sabbath from the seventh to the first day, he could have changed the writing of the Sabbath commandment written on the tables of stone, which are now in the ark in the most holy place of the temple in heaven. And it would read thus, The first day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, but I saw that it read the same as when written on the tables of stone by the finger of God and delivered to Moses on Sinai. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. I saw that the Holy Sabbath is and will be the separating wall between the true Israel of God and the unbelievers, and that the Sabbath is the great question to unite the hearts of God's dear waiting saints. I saw that God had children who do not keep the Sabbath, they have not rejected the light upon it, and at the commencement of the time of trouble, we were filled with the Holy Ghost as we went forth and proclaimed the Sabbath more fully. This enraged the churches and the nominal Adventists, as they could not refute the Sabbath truth, and this time God's chosen also clearly that we held the truth and they came out and endured the persecution with us. I saw the sword, famine, pestilence, great confusion in the land. The wicked thought that we had brought the judgment upon them, and they rose up and took counsel to rid the earth of us, thinking that then the evil could be stayed. In the time of trouble, we all fled from the cities and villages but were pursued by the wicked who entered the houses of the saints with a sword. They raised the sword to kill us, but it broke and fell as powerless as straw. Then we all cried day and night for deliverance, and the cry came up before God. The sun came up and the moon stood still. The stream ceased to flow. Dark, heavy clouds came up and clashed against each other. But there was one clear place of settled glory, 
where came the voice of God like many waters, which shook the heavens and the earth. The sky opened and shut and was in commotion. The mountains shook like a reed in the wind and cast out rugged rocks all around. The sea boiled like a pot and cast out stones upon the land. And as God spoke the day and the hour of Jesus' coming and delivered the everlasting covenant to his people, he spoke one sentence and then paused. While the words were rolling through the earth, the Israel of God stood with their eyes fixed upwards listening to the words as they came from the mouth of Jehovah and rolled through the earth like pearls of loudest thunder. It was hopefully solemn, and at the end of every sentence the saints shouted, Glory! Hallelujah! Their countenances were lighted up with the glory of God, and they shone with their glory as did the face of Moses when he came down from Mount Sinai. The wicked could not look on them for the glory, and when the never-ending blessings was pronounced on those who had honored God in keeping his Sabbath holy, there was a mighty shout of victory over the beast and over his image. Then commenced the jubilee, when the land should rest. I saw the pious lips rise in triumph and victory and shake off the chains that bound him, while his wicked master was in confusion and knew not what to do. For the wicked could not understand the words of the voice of God. Soon appeared the great white cloud. It looked more lovely than ever before. On it sat the Son of Man. At first we did not see Jesus on the cloud, but as it drew near the earth we could behold his lovely person. This cloud, when it first appeared, was the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. The voice of the Son of God called forth the sleeping saints, clothed with glorious immortality. The living saints were changed in a moment and were caught up with them into the cloudy chariot. It looked all over glorious as it rolled upward. On either side of the chariot were wings, and beneath it wheels. And as the chariot rolled upward, the wheels cried, Holy! And the wings, as they moved, cried, Holy! And the retinue of holy angels around the cloud cried, Holy! 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 Lord God Almighty! And the saints in the cloud cried, Glory! Hallelujah! and the chariots rolled upward to the holy city. Jesus threw open the gates of the golden city and led us in. Here we were made welcome, for we had kept the commandment of God and had the right to the tree of life. Holy Writings 32 to 34. Steep and windy road, a smooth white wall on one side and a precipice below. As we journey on, the way grows smaller still, stripped of all earthly.